So welcome everyone. Um, this is uh, tonight's presentation is brought to you by the Fallbrook Climate Action Team. And hopeful, hopefully you all know who we are and what we do. But for those who might not know, we're a group of citizen volunteers concerned about climate change. And we bring you various topics on the last Tuesday of each month. And so next month, we're gonna have a speaker from the San Diego County Climate Action Team and hear about, um, uh, about what the county is doing, especially given the new uh, administration, new county supervisors. And, and um, we've got a lot more focus on climate action. So that'll be exciting. Um, so one quick announcement, many of you have heard about our tree planning program. And so just a reminder, if you are interested in that, um, contact Tim O'Leary and I'll go ahead. Tim, maybe you wanna put your email in the chat for everyone. Um, and, uh, and then if you are in the tree, interested in the tree planning program, we're calling it Cut the Carbon, uh, just let Tim know. And what that involves briefly, it's a $50 donation, if you will, to the Fallbrook Land Conservancy. And that $50 will get you a tree and it will get, the, get, get you the uh, time and attention of Jackie Heineman and Tim O'Leary to come out to your property. And Jackie is, um, you know, she's been around Fallbrook for a long, long time and has been instrumental in the Save Our Forest program and knows just a lot about trees. So she's, um, she'll help you decide where to plant the tree uh, her son is a fireman, so she knows a lot about fire safety as well, and just has all kinds of literature to, to help you get started. So um, the, the trees we get are at contractor cost, so you get a great deal. You get a nice, big, beautiful tree for, for that amount, plus you'll be uh, considered a member of the Land Conservancy for a year. So it's a really great program, and will help get trees around our beautiful community. Uh, so a few ground rules before we get started here with our speaker. We're going to keep everyone on mute just to keep the background noise down and ask that you just hold your questions to the end. And what you can do is use the chat function. And if you're not familiar with how to get there, just scroll your cursor down towards the bottom of your screen and you'll see a pop up and you'll see an icon that says chat. Click on that and a side window will open up and you can type in your question. And that way you can type it in right as you think about it. You don't have to try to remember it till the end. And then when Frank is done with his presentation, um, we'll turn it over and um, Bill will open up for the questions and we'll read through those questions and, and make sure we get those answered for you. Okay, so tonight I am happy to introduce uh, Frank McCone. He's going to be talking about hybrid wind energy. So wind energy systems combined with solar, which is really fascinating. And we all know that our nation, uh, I think Biden's announcing it tomorrow, uh, a big push for economic, um, for economic mm -hmm. job growth mm -hmm. in the environmental community. So. Uh, and with wind and solar, and, and I don't know, Frank, I don't want to steal what you might even talk about, but um, is talking about a large wind farm off the East Coast, kind of off Long Island. So let me turn it over to Frank. Frank uh, worked for DuPont Corporation for 30 years, and he's the founder of a company called Air, Air Voltaics. So with that, Frank, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Terry. Appreciate it. Um, I'm pretty informal on this uh, presentation. So if anybody has any questions, again, just put them in the chats and we'll try to address them as they come. And without further ado, we'll go right to the presentation. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, we hear you fine. Okay. So we're gonna talk about hybrid wind, solar energy, past and the future. Uh, everything you wanted to know about small wind turbines, but we're afraid to ask. Uh, a ground mount solar with a 3.5 kW Kestrel wind turbine. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, where wind turbines used were, where were they were in the past and where they're going in the future. So the outline for today will be a brief bio on me. 
We're going to talk about the history of windmills on the planet. Uh, we're going to talk about where renewable energy, what's happened with it. We're going to give you some recommendations from the Department of Energy. Uh, we're going to talk about the limitations on solar, where they're at, and some of the programs. And then we're going to talk about small wind versus large wind. A small wind, just so you know, small wind turbines are anything under 100 kilowatts. So like, for example, the ones you see out in Palm Springs, those are 500 kilowatt turbines. They're about 500 feet in the air. Uh, the turbines that I talk, I'm going to talk about are the ones for the people of California. And they range from about 30 to 50 foot tall poles, monopoles. A um, little bit of history about me. I was born in Rochester, New York. Grew up in Boston, Massachusetts. Attended the University of Massachusetts Amherst. I have a BA in business management and finance. I was employed by the DuPont Company for 30 years in technical sales and distribution. And I was based entirely here in California. I did not have to uh, go back to uh, Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, so I retired about five years ago, created, uh, my wife said, go do something, get, her out of, get me out of her hair. So I created Air Voltaics in 2015 with the goal of providing affordable wind turbines and hybrid wind solar energy solutions. How I got into that was interesting. I was uh, initially, I was a distributor for Door King with uh, access systems and gate motors. We specialized in uh, solar powered gates. These are for people that had really long driveways and didn't want to run power down to their street. And I had a guy out in the desert who bought a system and he asked me, uh, can I, you charge my batteries with wind? And I said, well, I think so. So we, I contacted a few people and we got him a, a wind turbine. And lo and behold, he said, is there any rebates? And I said, well, let me check it out. And I found out that California has about $60 million in rebate monies for their self-generating incentive program for small wind. So uh, one thing led to another and uh, all of a sudden Air Voltaics was born. Um, I have a California broker's license. My wife and I, you know, she's a real estate agent and we invest in properties. And I also have a California contractor's license. I'm married to my wife, Julie, for 35 years and have two children, Juliet, 27 and Brett, 22. So a little bit about windmills. They've been around for thousands of years. Here we have uh, one in northeastern Iran. These are famous windmills and they used them to uh, provide you know, power for milling grains mostly. And uh, they're still there, still working. So let's talk about wind, wind 101. How is wind created? The land heats up faster than the water. So once the, the land heats up, the land, the, the air rises and creates a vacuum. The cooler air over the water rushes in to fill the void and voila, wind is created. That's a simple, simplified version of it. The amount of wind is dependent on any restrictions that get in the way, such as hills or mountains. Now in Fallbrook, we're lucky we have that San Luis Rey corridor uh, where I'm on, I live over by uh, Gird Road, and we get wind from what, 11 to 7 every day. California, as a, as a state, has an abundant wind supply due to the massive coastline and the desert areas inland creating the rising hot air. So if you think about it in the summer when the, you know, the desert really heats up, there's a lot going on and it's just sucking in wind from all over the place. So California was actually built using windmills for power. You know, you look around Fallbrook right now, we've got quite a few windmills still there, but there were thousands of them and they used them for pumping water and milling grain. The railroads used them for uh, steam engines where they had, you know, the, the things you see on the old Westerns where they had the water towers and a windmill sitting next to it. Well, the windmill would pump the water into the water tower and when the train came along, they would, uh, use the water for the trains. So what happened to all those wind turbines? <laughs> well, the simple fact is electricity became available and the grid was born. 
it was cheaper than maintaining the windmills. And so there was no effort made to modernize windmills. Everybody just used electricity for pumping water and the windmill slowly faded away. Unfortunately, we're at the point now where the cost of electricity is so high that many of these growers in Fallbrook and Valley Center, they're paying about $2,000 a month just to water their groves. So it's, it's sort of like full circle, everything's coming around. Wind turbines in general get a bad rap, especially from the ones in, in Palm Springs. You've seen that going out to the desert. It just, you know, everybody that sees it, you know, they, they, they understand it makes power, but they also understand it's somewhat of an eyesore. I'm not a real big fan of the big, massive turbines. Um, I am a fan of small wind turbines for people. Uh, but the big ones, I think they have a place, you know, as long as you, you know, you don't see them. <laughs> About 2010, the demand for renewable energy began to take off. There was massive incentives from both the state and federal, and they were designed to help consumers get into both solar and wind uh, in a big way. Small wind, less than 100K, were in their infancy. The market was fragmented and comprised of small manufacturers who took advantage of the rebates to sell their wind turbines. There were no requirements, though, for site testing, and some of these manufacturers began to sell them regardless if there was sufficient wind. As a result, there were frustrated consumers and many lawsuits. Small wind began to get a bad reputation. 2015, the government kind of caught up to it and passed regulations that required small wind turbines to undergo the same certification process as the large ones. As a result, the US went from 32 manufacturers of small wind turbines to the current number of zero. There are no small wind manufacturers in the United States of America, which is kind of sad. The rest of the planet though, China, Europe, everybody push forward and there's, you know, China doesn't have much infrastructure so they need small wind turbines. So they sell tons of them. And the rest of the planet, whether it's England or Denmark or wherever, they all have plenty of supply of small wind turbines to supplement their uh, existing grid. Let's talk about solar real quick because solar, the good and the bad. Solar for Californians is an excellent way to make power. The original vision was to get solar and someday be independent of the grid for the most part and reduce your bill to a minimum. Obviously, the utility companies did not like this and they made an all out push to get the Public Utilities Commission push laws for minimum payments for the use of the grid and time of use billing. I don't know if you're all familiar with time of use billing, but anybody that purchases a solar system and wants to go on the grid is required to go on time of use. Time of use was basically a stab in the back for solar. What it did is required between the hours of four and nine, they raised your rate from 24 cents, let's say a kilowatt hour to 60 cents a kilowatt hour. So, what happened was during this peak time of four to nine, this was the time when everybody was getting home to turn to cook meals, turn on the lights and you know do your wash and all that stuff. Uh, so it was a way for them to try and limit the number of people that were going with net metering for solar. You know, the reality was there were some people that were you know, paying the normal 24 cents kilowatt hour. And when they went to time of use, they actually could save money by shutting off their solar system. Uh, so what happened was utilities right now, they're, they're pushing even for higher rates for the use of the grid and higher peak time charges and limiting the number of net metering accounts. Understand, I used to work for a utility back in New Jersey. And I will tell you, they're, they're, the goal of them putting on more, they are not fans of solar at all. They are not fans of anything other than selling electricity to you for your cars and for you know all that you need. So even though they may say they're they're 
friends of solar, they're not. What's the true limitation of solar? Solar is only effective when the panels are at a certain angle to the sun. Unless you have a tracking system like the International Space Station that follows the sun, solar panels are only effective. And when I, mean, when I say effective, that means a certain amount of, of usable power between the hours of 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. It's just, it's just a coincidence that peak time starts at 4 p.m. for billing. So think about it. In the old days, if you had a solar system, you were, and you made power between the hours of 11 to 3, you were pumping back kilowatt hours into the grid at 24 cents a kilowatt hour. Now with time of use, you're charged 60 cents a kilowatt hour between the hours of four to nine. So that basically uses up all that goodwill that you put into the grid and forces you to pay extra, probably about 40 cents a kilowatt hour for the extra power that you use. So where does that come in with small wind turbines? Small wind turbines are an excellent, excellent complement to solar. According to many renewable energy experts, a small hybrid electric system that combines home wind electric and home solar offers several advantages over either single system. And these are for people that have wind. Understand that you know not everybody has wind. Small wind turbines are not for Mission of Viejo and Encinitas and downtown San Diego. They are for the rural areas of the country. In much of the United States, wind speeds are low in the summer when the sun shines brightest and longest. The wind is strong in the winter when less sunlight is available. Because of the peak operating times for wind and solar systems occur at different times of the day and year, hybrid systems are more likely to produce power when you need it. The nice thing about small wind turbines is they make power day and night, even when solar's offline. And because we can make power between the hours of four to nine, the value of a small wind turbine making power goes from a basic 24 cents a kilowatt hour to 60 cents a kilowatt hour. So it triples the value. So is small wind turbine right for me? Every site is a Rembrandt. I can tell you that regardless of when people say I have wind or I don't have wind or whatever, the only real way to determine if you have sufficient wind to justify a small wind turbine is to do a site survey using a computer controlled wind dimmer that logs speed and time. The picture I show you right now is of a device called the Rainwise Wind Logger. Costs about 350 bucks. We provide them to customers at no charge for a site survey. We come in, we put up a flagpole about 25 feet in the air with the anemeter on it. And we run a test for about 60 to 90 days. Based on that, that determines whether you can justify putting in a small wind turbine. Here's a graph. And this was actually a local guy, uh, Panky, down in uh, off of 76. And it shows the blue is the average wind speed and the red is wind gusting. So if you look at the graph, you'll see he's got about a 10 to 12 mile an hour average wind speed. And if the sweet spot is just between the, the average wind speed and gusting, so he's about a 14 to 15 mile an hour average wind speed. This would easily justify a small wind turbine. So what you do is you take the, these graphs are excellent because they tell the customer exactly what they're going to need or what they're going to get from the wind turbine. You take the average wind speed, you match that up against the annual production chart from a, a power curve from a small wind turbine, and that gets you to where, you know, how much power you're going to generate. In this case, it's meters per second they registered. So six meters per second is about 14 miles an hour average wind speed. You come up the graph and you see it's about 8,000 kilowatts per year, kilowatt hours per year. And that comes out to about $1,920 or $160 per month. The part I have a problem with it, and I haven't done enough testing on this, is, is how, much how much value we have during the peak hours between four and nine. 
So the only thing I could do is guesstimate that we'd be do about 2,000 kilowatt hours, giving about $1,200 per month or $1,200 per year and $100 per month. So I'd say a small wind turbine, 3.5 kilowatt hour, kilowatt size, will get you about 260 to $300 per month, provided you have enough wind. And again, it's all based on wind. Here's a picture of the turbine at my house and over by Sycamore Ranch. This is a 3K system. As you can see, it's not a very big footprint. It blends real well with the rest of the property and, and the, the golf course. And uh, again, I get power, I get wind from 11 to 11 to nine, depending on the uh, time of year. And uh, it works great. And, it, and as far as noise goes, there is no noise. You could stand next to it and you wouldn't hear it. Here's another example of my I hybrid system. I have uh, about 6K of solar on the uh, bank of my sport court there and couple that with the wind turbine. So it's about a 9K system. And so we make power, you know, day and night. Here's, an ex here's a picture of a, re we just finished a recent hybrid installation in Warner Springs at the Sierra Roble Winery. As you can see from the picture, there's a uh, about 3.5 kW of solar and he's got a 6 kW wind turbine. And this is a beautiful system. I mean, and there's plenty of wind out there and he just cranks on the power. Let's talk about incentives. Okay, you've all heard about solar. Solar gets, right now they're getting 22% of installed cost as far as a tax credit goes. Well, guess what? Small wind gets the same thing. So if you do a hybrid system, you can get 22% of the total system of both wind and solar. And that comes in as a tax credit. There's also a program for the rural areas by the United States Department of Agriculture called the REAP program. And this is for anybody that basically has 12 trees of something, uh, whether it's avocados or whatever. Um, and this comes in the form of a grant. And you can go to the uh, Department of Agriculture website and find the REAP program. And you can actually enter in your address and it will tell you whether you qualify for the program. And this, by the way, the, the, this REAP program, nobody's taking advantage of it the way they should be. I mean, it, the money's just being wasted. California does have a rebate program for small wind. And right now they raised it to $2 per max watt produced. So for example, a 3.5 kW turbine will get you $7,000 in a check. A 6K turbine will get you $12,000 in a check. The only catch to the California program, they currently require an 80 foot monopole for the turbine, regardless of how much it generates. Now that's that was that came from a, a decades old study done, and it does not relate to the modern turbines where they we can make plenty of power at uh, lower hub heights. So uh, we're trying to get this changed. So anybody that can help in that, we'd appreciate it. And uh, but that money right now, there's sixty million dollars that is just sitting there going to waste. So if you look at all this, this incentive program between the feds, the REAP program, California program, it, actually, it, it comes out actually paying for almost half of what it costs to put in a full hybrid system. The other half depends on how much energy you use, but if you use a basis of $250 a month bill for electricity, it comes out to about a five year return on investment. And that's great. So Fred, they mean solar and I the know. Wind. Yeah. Right now we have wind over there. Mm -hmm. Correct. So renewable energy for the people of California. Small wind turbines for the rural areas of California can help California achieve its lofty goals for renewable energy. What's interesting is that nobody's taking advantage of it. Now the problem is most of the small wind turbines have gone out of business in the US. I was just about to throw in the towel last year 
because every time I tried to get a unit, it was it was re removed from the list of qualified turbines by either the county or whatever. I mean, the biggest problem is getting a permit to get it installed. San Diego County has a ban on all Chinese steel, so I couldn't use the Chinese wind turbines. Um, fortunately, I was able to contact uh, two companies, SD Wind out of uh, Scotland and Kestrel Wind out of South Africa. And we were able to get dealer distributorships for both of those lines. So I am the distributor for both of those turbines for the Southwest, California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Hawaii which is my old turf with DuPont, so I kind of know it. So. so the company's called Air Voltaics, and we also picked up a new one last week called Enesari out of Italy. And if you look at that one, that's, that's a kind of a work of art. It's beautiful. Um, and that's, I, I, you know, it's double the price of everyone else because those are actually wood on those uh, veins. But they're very, they're becoming very popular. And I think they have a place in wind, small wind turbines. That's a 5KW um, for people that want both a work of art and, you know, a wind turbine. So we'll see how that goes. The center one is the Kestrel unit from South Africa. Uh, excellent company. They're part of EverReady in South Africa. So they have plenty of funding. And they have a full line. They do a lot of uh, turbines for pumping water throughout South Africa. So they have a system where you put in a turbine with a uh, off-grid batteries and a, a pump, and you can you know pump all the water you want. And I think that'll be excellent for a lot of the people like wineries and orchards and people right now. The final one is the SD Wind Energy from Scotland. That's the one we just finished putting in at. Uh, Warner Springs. Now that one, that kicks out a ton of power. They use them on oil platforms in the North Sea as backup. And, uh, you know, that those, I think those will be more of a commercial venture than for individuals, mainly because it's double the price of a 3.5K. So, and there you have it. Questions? I saw a couple of questions on the chat. Somebody wanted to know what you charge for doing the testing. Right now we charge nothing. In other words, if you think you have wind, we come out to the site, we install a flagpole and a wind anemeter and we monitor it for 60 to 90 days. And Karen had a question, do you want to, ask your question, Karen. Okay, thank you, Joy. Um, you had that first picture of a solar set of solar panels and a wind turbine. Um, okay. What is a system like that cost me, you know, and what does it generate is, I mean, it looks like a pretty big set of panels with if you took into consideration the the rebates or if you didn't just I'm just trying to get a sense well uh, you know i am a distributor i also did installs so it, you know i I'm, I'm not sure what my dealers are going to want to charge but i can tell you that normally you would put in about 3.4k of solar cuz you don't need it, it, for example a typical house in fallbrook has about a 5K system on their roof. Okay. What do you have, Bob? 30. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, Go ahead. Sorry. Ask if that's per day. Is that per day, a 5K system per day? No. A normal 5K system will produce about 28 kilowatt hours a day. A day. Yeah. Yeah. That's ours. Okay. Thank you. So, because you have the turbine as well as, I mean, you can put in as many panels as you want. I mean, that's, you know, depending on how much land you have and sure. where you go. So, but a normal system about a 4K of solar mm -hmm. and a 3.5 KW wind turbine should generate somewhere about, about well, I'm going to say about another 
20, about 38, 35 to 38 kilowatt hours. Okay. A day. A day. Okay. So yeah. as far as the cost goes, I'm going to say if you, if you put in a, you know, the full system, the full system. solar and wind, it's going to run you about 45 to 50,000. Mm -hmm. Rebates will pay for half of that. So about 20 to 25,000 in costs. And depending on how much uh, energy you, you use per month, if you're using about $250 per day, you know, per month in costs, like I do at my house. I mean, I actually use more than that. Um, you have a return on investment of around five to five and a half years. Okay, thank you. Do you also do the solar installation or are you, are you jobbing that out? My company did do, again, I, I'm going from being my original goal was to have aerovoltaics as a company that actually did did the installs like we did in the warner springs mm -hmm. but what happened was when i was making the arrangements with scotland and south africa they wanted a distributor versus a dealer mm -hmm. so i went from being a dealer to a full-on distributor who sets up dealers for given areas so right now we're trying to put on dealers for California, Arizona, mm. Nevada, and Hawaii. All right, thank you. And if you know anybody, let them give me a call because uh, <laughs> we're looking. Okay. It's, it's it's interesting because the solar guys, you know, I, I thought it would be a uh, a differentiator mm -hmm. to have to have it in the bag of putting in both wind and solar for people that have wind. Obviously, you know, mm -hmm. we're only good, we're only going to use it for a certain amount of people. Mm -hmm but they don't want it for some reason. The solar guys are just so happy with what they're doing now. Mm -hmm. You know, they're okay. fighting, they're all fighting over the same leads mm -hmm. and, you know, they just don't get it yet. So we're having right. to go outside the box a little bit. I think Kate Schwartz has a question. Kate, did you have a question? Yes, thank you, Joy. Sorry, I'm uh, on my phone. Uh, I wanted to hear from you, Frank, how the uh, solar systems that uh, utilize the Tesla backup batteries, how, how that compares with uh, this hybrid system of yours. Well, so time of use required people to pay the higher cost between four and nine. So, what, what, was their, what was their answer to the time of use? Well, the answer was to throw more money at it by installing Tesla batteries or LG or whoever. So you're not making any more power. So you, you got to think of it from a, just a strictly like, you know, a water faucet where b normally between the hours of, uh, you know, <laughs> 11 to three, you're pumping energy back into the grid and getting credit for it your meter is turning backwards, all that stuff. Now, they say, we want you to put in a Tesla battery. So between the hours of 11 to three, now instead of putting the power back into the grid where you're getting credit, you're charging batteries. And between the hours of four and nine, you can have the power from those batteries feed back into the grid to reduce that peak time, you know, crisis that they created. So, you know, the biggest problem I have with it is it turns your return on investment from five to, to eight years to, you know, 12 years because these batteries aren't cheap. I mean, the same batteries that go into a, a Prius or all these other cars, they're about 12 grand each. There are rebate programs to get them based on all the problems California is having. So they're throwing more money at it. But the effect is you're not making any more power. I mean, you're, you're just moving it around. With a small wind turbine, you're actually making more power. And, you know, yes, you could also have batteries with it. That's great for when uh, the power goes out. So, you know, I'm not really sold on what the 
benefits are from you know putting twenty four thousand dollars more into because you need like two the size of the batteries depends the number of batteries depends on how what you want to use i mean if you want to just use lights i mean one will do it but if you want to do other things like you know run your washer or whatever you have to have a minimum of two batteries to handle the load we're getting a lot of questions here uh tom stewart you have a question uh, it's actually elizabeth that has a question All right um and for those of us who already have solar what um how how does that change the, the cost and the installation and all of that sort of thing? Um, no batteries included here, just solar. Okay, I, uh, you want me to answer, the, answer that one? Please. So, okay, the, a, a small wind turbine requires a specific inverter that has a power curve into it. So the, the, the turbine has to remain in control. It can't spin away based on speeds. It's always in using electronic braking. It's always in control. In the old days when you had a small wind turbine, if the wind got over 40 miles an hour, you had to run out and pull a crank and tie down the turbine. Nowadays, they're all high tech and they have electronic braking, but they require a separate inverter and a controller. It can go on the same line as as in parallel with the solar system, but it does require a, a separate system, so to speak. Okay. So how much would that cost? Because that's a good question. A lot of people have solar, and I wish I had known this before we purchased solar, but how much would it cost to get a, a turbine, um, an inverter, and all the parts you talk about? And I'm going to say all the installed in, integrated into our solar system. I got you. That, what approximately for a standard 5K home photovoltaic system? I'm going to say somewhere around 25 grand. 25, and then you get half from rebates. Yes. And I will say I, I had to sell a property in Fallbrook. And I was hit with a twenty-four thousand dollar tax bill because I forgot about the uh, depreciation that they roll back into it. And thank God I hadn't applied for my rebates for both solar and wind, so I put them both in at the same time, and I got my tax bill from twenty-four thousand down to two thousand. So I'm a big fan of it. <laughs> Harriet had a question or two, I think. I don't see the chat box, so so I'm going to need Harriet, you to help. Harriet, did you have a question? Yes, I had a, a ton of questions. Um, um, there were a lot of questions. One quick question, please. I I typed them into the into the chat box, basically. Um, uh, so, and you've already answered some of those questions, but um, um, I I I guess. One of my questions is I'm actually uh, close to um, mission and ammunition. So is all of Fallbrook windy enough? Because you're kind of on the opposite side of town, I believe. Well, they actually have more wind over where you are than over where I am. Oh, so, cool. <laughs> which is interesting. But again, every site needs to have a site assessment done. It just, you know, nobody wants to sell you a wind turbine unless you actually have wind, it, it, you know, that doesn't work. So if you're, if you're interested, you know, we can set you up, put in a wind uh, animator and run it for 60 days and, and you'll find out. Now, the beauty of it is once you do the test, you know exactly what your consumption is going to be or what your, you know, how much power you generate. So between, you know, the wind and the solar, it's, it's one of the best ways of making power um just a comment on batteries i do have a battery system and i have an inverter and it's it, there's a there's quite a complicated set of boxes um but i love the battery system because when the power goes off 
which it has done, I don't know, like half a dozen times for as long as a day. They've been doing a bunch of retrofits and repairs on my street. So they've been taking our power grid down for a day at a time. They've done that three or four days in a, uh, three or four different days. And I love my battery system because my fridge is good and uh, my lights work and my TV and everything else. Like my internet continues. So the, there are other reasons to have a battery, but um, I'm just curious about the cost to integrate just a wind turbine because I've already got all the other stuff, I think, the inverter and such. Right. Well, again, the wind turbines require a separate inverter. The solar inverter oh. does not work for a wind system. It has to have a power curve built into it and all this stuff. Oh, so, okay. So what you would need is just an inverter, a controller, and a wind turbine. Those three things, and that's all included in that 25 approximate price. Let's move on to uh, Kirk Whistler. Thank you, Tom. Okay, and thank you, Frank, for your insights. I had two questions. One was the safety for birds on this. What's the factors there? And then the second question with that Italian one, what would the cost be on it? And and we already have solar, so so it would just be the similar question to others. What is that pure cost on that? Okay, as far as birds go, we do not kill birds. As a matter of fact, the Audubon Society did a study on small wind turbines and found that there was no danger to small you know small birds. If 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 there was a danger. You would have heard about it. I mean, we've had windmills in California for hundreds of years, and there would have been something that said, okay, they kill birds, but we don't. So birds, as a matter of fact, I got a wind turbine and I got a, a nest of birds right next to the wind turbine. There is no danger to birds. As far as the, what was that second question? I'm sorry, Kurt. The cost for the Italian system. Well, the Italians, like, it's a work of art. Think about that. <laughs> so, so yeah. So what's the cost? Double. It's about fifty grand. Okay. I don't know if I take you off of mirror, it may not work when you're on mirror. Understand this? No. I've never looked at it. So Watsons, what are your question? Lots of questions. Lots of good questions. Watsons. John Watson, what's your no, question? Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. I'm going to get you off mirroring. Frank, I don't think we've no. had this. We've never had this many Can questions. Can you hear us now? Before. Yes. So good, good job. That's a good thing. Yeah, that's great. Let's go ahead. Can, you, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. I'm curious about. Uh, like the col columnar wind generators with the curved fan blades uh, that you could, that, that seem to be about the residential size and you don't have to have a, a pedestal with a big blade rotating. Do you have any information on uh, how you could incorporate those into uh, a common combo system or uh, by themselves? The well, Dutch and the Germans and uh, several countries have these different you're talking, kinds. You're talking about vertical axis turbines versus horizontal axis turbines. Is that what, you, what your question is? You didn't hear yes. the talk, so you don't know. Vertical. Okay. vertical. So the problem with vertical right now is they're not very efficient. The while the Italian one would work, I mean, it, it's probably for somebody like, you know, Facebook that puts it in front of their building so they feel good about it. But the reality is they're not very efficient. Um, there was a company that had vertical access turbines, and they actually put about a dozen of them on Lincoln Stadium in Philadelphia. And they thought they would work, but they ended up taking them all down because they just aren't efficient enough. They just don't work. Well, the Dutch and the Germans use. They do, vertical. but they, they have, but the, and they have tremendous wind there. So, you yeah. know, I, I can only tell you what I've heard, what I've seen. I know a guy out in uh, Poway, he's got one, or actually Ramona. Um, they're just huge. And 
You know, they're double the size. They require a massive pole, by the way, because of the, the torque on it, the torque on the, the vertical. So the pole was actually, you know, two times larger. So the base of the pole was about five feet wide. Um, oh. just I think they were talking about two different things. Are you talking about small ones that go on the roof? Those well, type? The, I'm talking about a small one. The Dutch have them where they have a station that has to have power at all times. It was doing some, some other function. I don't know what it was. And they have curved blades. And the thing is man-sized. It's not very big. And because of the curvature of the blades, very carefully done, they can utilize small winds as well as big winds to rotate this thing and create the power they need for their little workstation, whatever it is. Yeah, the, so the answer is everything depends on what you need. So the smaller ones, the, the problem is unless you have a turbine for, okay, so for home use versus something like you're talking about where it's like Caltrans has a little station that they wanna get data from that they need to have batteries charged. Those type of things work. They put them on boats. I don't know if you've seen them on boats where they charge up the battery while the boat's sitting there. Um, mm -hmm. There's all kinds of stuff for that. And everyone has a place in the power chain, so to speak. What I found is that unless you have at least a minimum of 3K for a turbine for a home, it, you, just, you don't make enough power. It doesn't have enough of an impact. So yes, there's plenty of places around the planet that are experimenting with vertical turbines and stuff for charging whatever they need. And that depends on what they need. For example, Kestrel sells 3.5K, they sell 2Ks, 1K, you know, everyone has a place. No, I have a corner of my property where they're either the vertical or the horizontal would work quite well. Cool. McCall. I don't want to kill any birds. I can guarantee you no birds. I've had mine for two years. No birds. I got birds with a nest next to it. They love it. <laughs> hey, Frank, um, do you know how to look at the chat box? I cannot see the chat box. No. Do, could, could, um, at the bottom of your screen, there's a little, a little uh, thing that says chat. Do you see that? Out of my mind. Hold on. Know. Or maybe you well, leave the presentation. Oh, oh, I see it. I see it. I see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go to the top, chat box. There's a, there's a lot of really simple questions that they're, they're good questions, but there's a lot of really quick ones that you can answer in like 10 seconds. Okay. Let's start. Well, uh, uh, also, Tom and Elizabeth Stuver had their hands raised again, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll admit confusion on the numbers on solar. We have a, 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 there's 26 panels and we acquired it a little over two years ago and are producing what my bills says is less than when they true up at year end, it is less than $50 for all the power that's used for the house and, and everything else. And so I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused on how this interplays with the uh, use of the, of the net metering and where it, where it is that my math doesn't seem to jive with any other math that we've been discussing. I can give you some input on that, I think. Okay. Uh, Tom, a couple years ago when they start when they started net um, they started time of use, um, some of us were grandfathered in if we got uh, got it in 2015 or earlier. I uh, think that started in 2016. So if you got years before then, you were grandfathered in. And so the net metering hasn't hurt you like it has so many of the newer systems. Yeah, we got it in 19. Um, oh, yeah. well, I'm 
don't know. Maybe you were able not to opt into the um, net metering, uh, but I know, I'm sorry, not the net metering, the time of use. Mm -hmm. but I, I just know how it applied to us because we were grandfathered in. But what do, um, you, what do you think, Frank? Well, it sounds uh, like you don't need it. It depends on how much power he uses. Okay. I have a household with uh, four, uh, four adults and teenagers, and, you know, they suck power like no tomorrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I'm hoping I can get it down, you know, and I have to get it down to where I'm paying 100, 150 a month which is be golden versus, you know, in the summertime, I get bills of $800. I was before. So it all depends every, again, every site is a Rembrandt. It depends on you, your house, how much energy you use. Uh, we have all electric, electronic, electrical appliances, electric stove, air conditioning, you know, we just suck electricity. So for me, it's one thing for another person. You know, if if you've got a solar system that gets you to the point where you're only paying fifty dollars a month in electrical yeah, right. and to San Diego Gas and Electric, well, you've won. That's you've, yeah, you've won the game. That, yeah, you've won the game. He said a year. He's paying that much a year. Well, then yeah. he's won, then he's really won the game because that's that's the minimum, yeah. I guess, for San Diego Gas and Electric is asking for your use of the grid. That's right. Yeah. That's that's what we pay is their charge and is that going to, are they fighting to make that they're fighting to make that go up big time just so you know probably yeah right well i and i would i would like to, to be covered at night without having to pay whatever their fee is that was that was my interest in the whole thing <laughs> well if that were to occur we wouldn't have any bills yeah i mean but, but that, that so the most recent most recent notice from them with their SDG and E that is uh, indicating how hard they're working for the consumers is really an effort on their part to get everybody up to the, the, the 60. Is that what's going on in, in short? Yeah, I mean, you know, you have, you have to understand a utility company. They have a separate, se they have a separate section in every utility company with some of the biggest minds of the country and their whole goal, their only goal is to see how they can raise rates because you know, that's how they get paid. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they do everything they can to massage it, makes you make you, you know, feel like it's, it's doing you good, but it's not, you know, things like that. So, you know, you have to understand the game that they're playing. Obviously they don't <laughs> like wind or solar. Um, they put up with it like they put up with uh what you know the san onofre uh power station how much are we going to pay for that for the next 20 years right and that's that, that that's some of their pitch right now is that we are making all all of our neighbors um pay our bill yeah <laughs> so with time of use they're saying, well, put in bad. So they created it. They created a problem with time of use where people were paying 60 cents a kilowatt hour. They gave themselves a raise between four and nine, the peak time when people use power. Mm -hmm. And their solution to the problem that they created was for you to go out and spend more money on batteries. Now, if you need battery backup, like the one lady said, hey, it works. You don't need, you can buy maybe one battery and that'll keep your refrigerator going, things like that, or whatever. But you know, it's like a, they create the problem and then find a solution where you end up paying more money. So Michael Phelan has a question. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of questions on the uh, chat box. So you want, you want yeah, to I think he got those. most of them. But Michael Phelan's question is still outstanding. I, I can ask that if you guys can hear me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. One uh, one question I have is. Do you have any trouble getting the SD County to permit these things? Oh yeah, <laughs> they don't like it either. That, that was my biggest problem where, where I almost threw in the towel. In order to get a turbine installed, you, remember I told you that the companies had to have the same certification as the big guys? Well, they still do. 
in order for you to get the rebates, you have to have what's called an SWCC, Small Wind Certification Council certification. And you have to have undergone two years of testing. Um, the two companies that we sell have that certification. They actually spent the money and did the, you know, the testing. If you don't have that, you, they will not give you a permit. I had several projects. I had like six projects in the works with a company out of China and I just couldn't get the permit. So we had to, you know, do something else. But fortunately, the two companies that we deal with now are uh, Kestrel and SD Wind, and they both have the SWCC AWEA 9.1 certification that will get you a permit. So, so um, following up on that, so the dealers that, that you would work with, they don't need any special training or license? No. Okay, so, so the manufacturer is the one that actually has to have the license. Has to have the certification. That's correct. Correct. Okay. All right. So any 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 electrician that knows what he's doing could possibly be a dealer for you guys. Yeah. If you're a contractor, you know, I was able to do it because I was putting in solar powered gate motors, and I qualified for it. So anybody that has a contractor has a contractor's license that wants to get into the business, I'll talk to him. <laughs> mm -hmm. And. And who do you think would be good for that kind of uh, assignment? Well, I mean, so the question is, uh, do people need power? Is there, is there rebate programs that can help people? I mean, think of it as a business, okay? How many businesses do you know of where you sell something to somebody and these three guys over here help you pay for it? I mean, if I had that at DuPont, I would have been golden <laughs> where it had somebody else paying for half the cost of the system um i just want to jump in here and do a chime check we're right at 7 30 so i don't know if we have some remaining burning questions well, Diane, diane summers and deanna peterson had questions still you guys want to ask okay them? i'll make mine i'll make mine really quick Okay. Um, so do you, uh, do you also do solar, um, or these hybrids for public, um, programs like schools? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As a matter of fact, okay. that's, 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 you know, awesome. right, right now we're working on two microgrid projects, one wow. out in, uh, Anza and one out in Ramona where they're going to put in, you know, like a bunch of wind of uh, solar panels with with two or three wind turbines. I got it. Um, and Karen Lieber had wanted you to share your PowerPoint with us, if that's possible. Sure, if you give okay. me a email yes. address. Yeah, you can just send it to me or Tom and we'll forward that to people who are answer interested and i think deanna had a question or two don't don't you deanna yes, yes i do i don't think you answered this question we have both uh solar and battery and i wanted to know if the wind turbines can be fed into a battery the wind turbine can be fed into the same system that the solar is fed into so the solar feeds into the battery system so can the wind yes Okay, good, good. They, they will run it as parallel. Okay, that's my only question. Thank you. Can you put your contact information up again really quickly? Sure. So we have a website called airvoltaics.com. You can go to that and get all, you know, leave messages there, or whatever, or you can call me in my cell, 760-518-1203. Thank you. And if he, when they um, send us the PowerPoint, we could put a link to that on our website, I think. Right, Tom? Yes. Okay. That. Oh, that'd be super. Thanks. 
Good science. Go ahead. Good science. Well, the rest of the planet is taking advantage of small wind. There's no reason that we shouldn't be. Uh, so we're just, you know, we're trying to play catch up. Now I can tell you from in Northern California with, you know, uh, paradise and all those places, I just have to believe there's a tremendous demand for both wind and solar. All right. If, uh, any other final questions for Frank? If you do have questions, you can put them on my website and then we'll answer them. Okay, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. I, one one real good a good question that Michael had was if the grid goes down, does the wind turbine still produce power or does it shut down? It's the same as solar. Yeah, so it will shut down. It will. Okay. The, the turbine the, when there's no power to the inverter, it will right. actually shut off the turbine and stop it dead. It won't work, and that's just you know the the way the uh, electrical electric you know, SDG and E set up the system. So when the power goes off, everybody has solar thought, you know, I'm going to have power, but you don't. No, nope. yeah, they, they claim it's because of safety reasons. Yeah, because if they're working on the grid and yeah. you're, you're feeding power back in, it can hurt them. But the main reason is that, you know, they, they want you dependent on them. Right, right. So, you know, I understand. I mean, it's natural. Yeah. Hey, this is Michael. Just a, a just a point to, to add to that is if you do have a battery, your solar will keep producing during the day, even if the grids shut off. If you have a battery, if you don't, it won't. And I'm sure it's probably the same with the the turbines. Yes. The so battery. It, so it'll charge the battery. The battery. Okay. Now, right. can you can you? There is a way you can take a off grid system using some components from a company called Midnight out of Washington. And you can set up a system where by throwing a few breakers, you can have your wind and solar feed into some offset batteries, you know, not, not exactly Tesla's, but you can get some of the, uh, the Trojan batteries or the large batteries, six volt batteries. And you can set yourself up with a off grid system that will supply power when the grid is off. I mean, that's, those are always options. Very good. Thank you, Frank, so okay. much. We really appreciate your time and a lot of, obviously a lot of interest in this with all of the questions. So thank you very much. I appreciate yes, you. Uh, you. Let me do it. I, I, you know, and if there was any questions, let me know, but hopefully we'll, we'll get this going. We are trying to get to the governor's office to get him to, uh, change the bylaws or the, the policy that states that you have to have an 80 foot pole to get a small wind turbine rebate from the state. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. We make just as much power at 40 feet as we do at 80 feet. In, uh, in, in perspective, how tall is yours? 30 feet. 30. Okay. The one in Warner Springs is 45 feet. Okay. And that's a big one. So between anywhere between 30 and 40 feet is you know, with these new high-tech turbines, it's more than adequate. We don't need it. And uh, we're trying to get it changed. I can't understand why it's so difficult to do it, but it is. Uh, but we'll go from there. Even without the California rebate, though, there's plenty of rebate monies from both the federal and the Department of Agriculture that can help people pay for the turbines. Okay, well, we'll try to get that change. We'll lobby. That would be Our great. Okay. We are going to have a party as soon as uh, the COVID thing breaks out in Warner Springs to celebrate the install of that system. So anybody interested in come out and say hi. And... At the winery, right? Yes. All right. <laughs> We'll, we'll be there. <laughs> I, I heard invite. <laughs> 40 of your closest friends are all now coming. <laughs> Not a problem. More than merrier. You only have to buy a bottle of wine, though, when you get there. <laughs> okay. nope. No problem. 
Well, Frank, thank you so much. Um, we'll, we'll let you go at this point in time. I know we're a little bit over, but um, a lot of really great questions and a lot of really great information. So thank right. you so much. All right, guys. Have a good day. Okay. okay. Thanks. Bye-bye.